Good morning, Vietnam. Oh, I mean, America. Hey, uh, quick video. You know, I've been praying about this once saved, always saved, and the things that uh, Pastor Tim Henderson is preaching, and um, Katie did, and uh, Blue Haven, a few other people. You know, I'm really concerned about that because, like the rest of you guys, you can see scriptures about predestination and things like that. And of course, they're going to want they want to use all these scriptures and to prove that you can't lose your salvation and that you can't even sin. You know, and then if you have a dream, Tim Henderson will come against you and say, "Well, that was a demonic dream," even though uh, you may have dreams that that even that come to pass that God has given you because the devil works against himself, right? And the devil wants you to be, he wants to preach a gospel where you're, you believe in righteousness and keeping your garments clean according to the scripture and all these other verses that talk about being presented as a holy spot, a holy and spotless bride to Christ. And, um, you know, it's the same thing with the people that don't believe in the rapture. They want to say that, well, you Christ is going to beat his bride up before he comes and picks her up. She's got to go through this thing where they cut your fingers off and torture your family and rape and murder and all this other stuff. And then if you make it through that, well, then you're accounted worthy, you know. And my position on on sinning, I don't know if I made it clear or not, but, you know... <clears throat> As a believer, this is a daily thing. The, the, the Bible tells us that we have to pick up our cross and walk daily with it. There are so many hundreds of scriptures that talk about how this thing is something that's over time. And that, especially if you look at the, the book of 1 John and about people saying they don't have any sin and all those things. I don't know how these guys explain this. But anyway, there's just tons and tons of it. You know, and what it turns into is an argument. And these guys, this is false. Goofy phone call interrupts me. And then I can't just upload straight from my phone. I've got to put it all on a computer and then upload from there. But here's the thing. Look, I was praying about this because I love Sister Katie did. And I, these people, I don't want to have any arguments with them. I don't want to fight with them. I know where she's coming from. I went round and round with her a, a little bit on this. Here's the thing. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, is this true? Because if it's true, and I asked the Lord, I said, look, I put this video up, but I'll take it down if I'm wrong. I said, I need some guidance on this. And I said, tell me, can you tell me one way or the other? And the Lord hasn't been giving me a lot of dreams, you know. I mean, just sporadic here and there, you know. And so, uh, the day that I made that dream, Pastor Patrick and I talked, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit fell, and there was a powerful anointing and everything. But, um, here's the thing. I prayed about it, right? And I, and I have a dream. And I've been really tired here lately because I'm, I'm not feeling too good. But anyway, I have this dream in the middle of the night and I wake up immediately after the dream. And in the dream, there's a man like either preaching or command or telling people what to do, right? He's given instruction on what to do, right? And I'm there and there's a woman. A blonde-headed woman with short hair, and then there's a uh, uh, two other men, and this guy is telling them that the proper thing to do is to take their clothes off. He told them take your he wants them to take your clothes off to make everything right and be and be right or be clean. It had something to do with being clean. You had to take your clothes off, and so they're like, well. well Okay, well, I guess if he says this is the way it has to be, well, it's got to be the truth. And they, and I was just astonished because they took their clothes off voluntarily and the woman laid down on like a, they had like a rack, like a set of racks, like 
bunk bed kind of thing and there were three of them and she laid in between the two men and they all took their clothes off too and they lay and the guy told them you have to take your clothes off and put them on the thing and lay on top of your own clothes and so you know i was embarrassed because i could see parts of her naked body when she laid down on that bed and so could he this guy that was was given these orders you know and and I, I even questioned him. I said, why are you doing this? Why would you want to, why would you do this? Don't you see what he's doing? He's t telling you to take your clothes off so he can look at you. He can see you naked. And the woman said, well, this is what we have to do. I, I trust this man. This is what he says and this is what we have to do. And the other people were the same way. And then they were trying to get me to do it. And I said, no way. I'm not doing that. Kitty cat wants out. So anyway, you know, I was thinking about that for the past few days. And really what I think it is, is these guys, you see, when they preach once saved, always saved, that you can never sin, and they go completely against the words of Jesus Christ when He told the woman, go and sin no more. You have to repent. I'm not saying people don't, don't sin. First John tells us that. We all sin. But when you sin, you go back to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And when it talks about predestination, people misunderstand that because predestination, you see, God is eternal. He knows the outcome already. We know this because the Scripture says that Jesus Christ was slain before the foundation of the earth. It also says that there's a book with all the names in it. So that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Well, the, the, there's a book and my name's already written in there. I can't sin against God and lose out. Well, no, what it means is when you're talking about eternal security of any believer is the fact that God already knows who's going to make it. God knows what's going to happen. Before you do it, you see, He already knows what's going down. So, therefore, He can, he can see through time and see these par places in your life and help you make it through it. But He also knows those who will turn against Him, just like He knew that Judas would turn against Christ. And Jesus said, the only one I've lost is the one, the son of perdition. And then those same people will try to take that and use that as a way to say, well, see, you can't be lost because uh, he, the Lord was talking to those disciples. And if we look at Ananias and Sapphira, they came to, to those apostles and said, hey, we, here's the money. And they said, well, is it all of it? First, her husband came. Ananias came. Yeah, this is all we got. And they were keeping some back. And the Holy Spirit slayed them. Killed them right there. And then here comes, killed him. And then here comes the wife. A few minutes later or 30 minutes later, whatever it was. She says the same lie. And the Holy Spirit kills her too. And that's, Peter was right there when that happened. You know, and these people want to say, well, God's not going to do that. Why? God is love. And God, he sure is. But God is also a just God. And God is the God of the Bible. And the Bible talks about how we have to, on our part, we have a thing that we have to do. God provides salvation. It's a free gift by grace. It's unmerited. And what it means by unmerited and uh, by grace is that um, this unmerited thing is, is something that God is not respecting people. In other words, if you're a Jew, well, you get it and the rest of them don't. Or if you're a rich person or you're in a certain family lineage, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about it's available to everyone equally, but you have to take it. You have to go up there. When God's spirit comes to you and he talks to you and, and, he, and he convicts you of sin, you have to say, oh, I'm sorry. And then repent and then begin walking a Christian life. The Bible tells us to take up our cross and walk daily. The Bible tells us to resist Satan and he will flee. Why does it have all these scriptures about resisting, about fighting the devil, about putting on these, this equipment to, to battle the devil, you see? And then the Tim guy tries to say the people that are going against his, his, his gospel that he's preaching, are demonic possessed. And even those people that have died and came back to life, even the ones that believed like he did and were converted because they came back and said, hey, God said, that's a bad doctrine. And and so, you know, 
he's calling those people liars. And here we have Muslims. That's like in the Muslims, right? They're, they're killed on the battlefield and some of them see Christ. When they come back, they say, look, I saw Jesus Christ and they convert from Islam to Christianity. Okay? And then the Muslims are all going, oh, brother Muslim, you can't do that. Well, that's not right because Jesus Christ, we know he's just a prophet. Do you see? Tim is doing the same thing to these other Christians. And he needs to really get down on his knees and go back and pray to the Lord and say, God, what is the truth on this? Because what I saw was a man preaching to other people and telling, making them take their clothes off and sin against God. That's what the man was doing. And these people were like, well, I know it does, it doesn't sound right, but I'm going to do it anyway, you know, because this guy's saying so and whatever, you know, it's a hard walk. Let me tell you, I struggle, I struggle with sin too. Everybody does. And when I said in my last video, I said, well, there are different kinds of sin, you know, and what, what it's people, some person gets on me and says, look, you're trying, trying to say, that there are worse sins than others. And what I'm saying is, in our minds, we consider one sin over another. And you know what I mean? Like, uh, when you're driving around the ro road and somebody is going slow in front of you and you get really angry at them, anger, according to the Bible, is a sin. Right? But then, that same person that gets angry on the road and doesn't think anything of it, that person would never stick his hand in the till at work and steal some money. Well, that's, that's wrong. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. People thinking sin, one sin's different over the other. Stealing, taking extra time at work, and I tried to explain that. And people, it's what, what is so strange? I was in law enforcement for 10 years, and I would, you know, sometimes I had to arrest people. I was over for the fire department as a fire prevention officer, and Sometimes I'd have to arrest people. Sometimes I'd try to, uh, you know, I'd tell them pe things. I'd r have it written down, written orders, and they would still misinterpret what the right written orders were sometimes. You see? Because that's what human beings do. You know? So, I think I got somebody out here. Anyway. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be right back with you guys, and we'll say a prayer and get on with our lives. Thanks. So, let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, my brothers and sisters, and I come before your throne. God Almighty, we ask that you'd help. Help us understand your precious word. Help us understand what Paul wrote about grace and the things in there that are so hard to understand, Almighty God. We ask that you'd bless my brothers and sisters and Help them to keep their garments clean. To keep their garments spotless. God Almighty, and we know that these aren't works. These are things that we do because we love you. Works are the things when we go out and we give money to the poor and we help homeless people and we give a cup of cold water to somebody that needs it or help them in some other way God it's not us resisting Satan that is not our works Father God we ask that you'd undertake in the mighty name of Jesus Amen